Symphony, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Tutorials. Because <laughs> we have multiple tutorials for this video. Yay! Is that a dumb joke? Yes, it is. The other day, I was sitting down admiring nature, just having a nice time, when an idea suddenly hit me. <laughs> so my idea basically was this. Everybody loves a piston house, right? Yeah? Do you agree? Yeah, of course you do. But for some people, they can be very tricky to make, and that's completely understandable. So I thought, let's make a series where I showcase some builds on a theme which can help you with a piston house. Now I'm realizing that really doesn't make much sense. <laughs> so let's take this video for example. Today's builds are all going to be about elevation but all the builds are going to be designed to fit in a piston house that of course means they have to be one really small because they have to fit in a tiny little house or a room and secondly they have to be really awesome because come on no one wants a boring piston house <laughs> let me know what you think about this series idea in the comment section below of course if all of you hate it then this will be the first and it will be the last but if you guys like it then of course i will make more so uh yeah let me know in the comment section below so like i said today's builds are all about elevation so let's take a look. Does anyone know how to get rid of that saving icon? Literally, every time I'd go to record, it just pops up. <laughs> so annoying. Go away! <laughs> so here's our three builds regarding elevation. And each one is completely different, which is awesome. And I'll be doing a tutorial for each one, obviously, because I am so generous. <laughs> Taking a look at our first build, we have a very simple drop down staircase. So this is our floor here. You can imagine this being our flooring. But when this device or contraption gets activated as you can see here our floor drops down and we have a little hidden staircase which is perfect which drops us down just enough so we can go underneath our floor perfect and then when we're done we flick the lever again and everything pops back up not only is this build really fast it's actually super tiny <laughs> it's actually layout sized you know you can't go any smaller than that because we've got pistons there and you can't go any smaller than that because you've got pistons here i don't know if you can go smaller um, if you change the layout, I don't think so. So I think this might be the smallest possible drop down staircase, but I'm always a bit scared saying that because somebody's going to contradict me. I just know it. <laughs> but anyway, it's a really cool build regardless. Now, our second build is actually a tiny hidden player launcher. How cool is this? So just one second so I can just reach the button. So I'm going to place the button there. Of course, we'll move the button later. Don't worry about that. If we stand on this block and press the button, as you can see, we get launched up in the air. How cool is that? And it actually launches you three and a half blocks high. Now, you may be thinking, well, why don't you just have a slime block in the floor? And to that, I say, slime blocks are seriously ugly. <laughs> you don't want to be messing up your floor with these green blocks. You want it to be completely seamless like this. And how cool is that? And it works every single time. And to be honest, I just, I just really like this build. <laughs> and taking a quick look at this redstone, as you can see, it is very small. Yeah, that's pretty much, <laughs> that's pretty much it. It's absolutely tiny and it works really nicely. Just look at that. <laughs> and if you're wondering about the weird button or lever placements, don't worry, I will be showing you how to move them with the tutorial, so don't worry. <laughs> so yes, we've had a drop down staircase. We've had a player launcher. So of course, third, we have to have a two way trapdoor. <laughs> so with this build, this is our floor. We stand here, we press this button, and we get dropped down. And now we're underneath our base. Very nice. And then we want to get out. We press the button, and we get launched up. Now, for those of you who are really eagle-eyed, you may have noticed a, a weird block spitting out. And there is a really good reason for that. A lot of two-way trapdoors, when you press the button, you have to hold shift, and you land. And of course, once you fall from that height, you will take a little bit of damage. But with this build, you don't need to, because that little, that little block there, which extends, actually catches you as you fall you don't bounce back up you can land without even holding shift i just thought i don't know it just makes the build a little bit cooler because <laughs> you haven't got to do anything all you have to do is literally just press the button and you're down boom <laughs> and another good thing about this design there's no obsidian in the floor which is cool <laughs> and like the others this build is extremely small as you can see now it can be a tiny bit smaller you can actually remove these blocks here but you couldn't have it seamless or have the button on the floor. So 
I thought, yeah, let's just make it a tiny bit bigger. Let's have it completely seamless so we can't see any of the redstone and have a button on the floor because it just makes it so much better. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> I think I'm going mad. Okay, so now you've seen the three builds. Let's, um, let's do a tutorial for each one. This is going to take forever, isn't it? Oh, dear. <laughs> So for our first build, which is the drop-down staircase, you're going to need 6 deep pistons, 4 observers, 3 resin repeaters, 3 resin torches, 2 resin dust, 1 slab, 1 lever, 7 blocks, 3 resin to go, and 11 blocks for your decoration. Okay, we've finally got to the tutorial. <laughs> now for every tutorial, we're going to go nice and slowly, so don't worry. I'm also going to show you how much you have to dig out, so you can do it in survival. And then after the tutorial, so after every single tutorial, I'll be showing you how the build works. Okay? So for our first build, which is the drop down staircase. So firstly, as you can see here, what I've done is I've laid out a three by three square. So these six blocks here are our flooring and these three are the blocks which are gonna be moved down. So those three are those three there. Now, as I look at this build, this block will go down one block. This block, those cave noises can really go away. <laughs> so this block will go down one block. To there this block will go down two blocks and this will be our third block so we'll be going down the staircase this way does that make sense okay so after you've got the orientation right <laughs> what you need to do is dig out a little area but don't worry it's only a small little area so firstly we want to remove these three blocks one two three and these three then remove three to the right and then these four down here one two three four so you should have a four by four square with our three blocks like this. And remember, our staircase is going to go down this way. So now you've done that, now you need to dig that out four more times. This hole needs to be five deep. Okay, like that. So now you have a four by four by five deep hole. Just make sure it is five deep. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So that block is going to be retracted down to here. And then we're going to have our third staircase down here. So just make sure that we're building it in the right orientation, okay? Because that'd be very annoying if you build it in the wrong one, okay? <laughs> so firstly, we're going to place in the pistons. So what we're going to do is come down one, two blocks underneath the middle one, grab a sticky piston and place it off the side of this block facing upward like so. Then what we're going to do is come out two blocks underneath this piston. We can remove these two, one, these two now. Then grab two more sticky pistons and place them on the side of these blocks. One and two. Then remove these two. Then we're going to grab a decoration block and we're going to place it next to this top piston here. Then on top of this decoration block, facing up toward this slab or this block, place a piston. Come out one, two blocks like this. Place a sticky piston facing toward this one and one above. Got that so far? <laughs> then remove these two blocks. Okay, now we've got our piston layout, we can actually place in some of the redstone. So, come out one, two blocks from this piston here, remove the first, place down our lever here and flick it on. Grab three torches and place one on this side, on the right, one above, and one toward this piston here. Now place a block to the left of this one. Then we want two observers, one coming away from this piston, so the dot going toward the front is that the front of our build yeah technically <laughs> and then another one going toward this block here so place it like that so the arrow should be going toward this block on this block we need a piece of dust and on this observer going toward this block we need a repeater on three tick delay so place it down and press it twice once twice you got that good <laughs> then we want to grab another observer and we need to place it coming away from this torch here, going into this space, like so. So the face is detecting that torch. Then place a block here. On this observer, place a repeater on one tick delay. So just place it down and don't press it again. And place a block here. Am I going slow enough, by the way? If I'm not, can you let me know in the comment section below? Or if I'm going too slow, can you let me know as well? <laughs> I always worry. On this torch, we want to place a block. Then on the top side of this piston, here, we want to place a slab. Now, if you struggle to do that, just grab a piece of glass. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be a transparent block. On this slab, 
we need a repeater on two tick delay. So place it down and press it once. Then a block here next to this piston and dust like this. And now you're almost finished because all you have to do now is place a temporary block here, an observer like this with a dot going toward the right hand side and a block. And that surprisingly is everything completely done. <laughs> so when I flick the lever, we should have our full extension, perfect. Flick the lever again and we should have the full retraction. Brilliant. So all we can do now is place in our floor like so. And then make sure you just place another block here to cover up all the rest zone. And that's it. <laughs> that is literally it. And if you want to move the lever, all you've got to do is to power this block directly or indirectly. So you can either have a repeater going into it like that, or if you're in a tight space like this, have some dust, maybe with a block up like that block here and a repeater, then have a block and your lever on it, and you can move the lever wherever you like. Very, very simple. So as promised, I'm now going to try and explain how this build works. Try. <laughs> so this build is very simple. Basically, it's a single piston extender, a double, and then a very simple trap door like that. And that's all it is. So that one has to extend down, simple double piston extender, and then this one retracts, and these two retract. And that's it. But how does this all fit in a tiny area like this? Well, when I flick this lever off, to close this door. Firstly, this block unpowers, which allows that torch there, this torch here and this torch here to power again. So firstly, that torch is going to power, which is going to extend this piston here. We have our first part of our double piston extender. At the same time, as I think we said, this torch is turning on, which is going to power this block, which is going to power this dust, which powers these two pistons, moving that piston to there. And as this block is getting powered, two ticks later, this repeater is um, powering and it will power the piston, which, is, which has been moved from there up to here. Like that. Does that make sense? <laughs> now, at the same time as this torch is turning on, this dust obviously turns on because it's next to it. Then after three ticks, this repeater turns on, powering this block, which is directly underneath where this piston will be. It powers this block here. Okay, and at the same time as that, <laughs> when this torch turns on, it powers this block, and after one tick of delay, this block gets powered, which obviously extends this piston. Like so. Very simple. So the extension is really, really easy. That's the easy part. But it's the retraction where it gets a little bit more complicated. When I flick this lever back on, of course, those three torches are now going to be turned off. The easiest one to understand is this one here. When I flick this lever on, this torch turns off, so this block unpowers, unpowering this repeater after one tick, unpowering this block, which means that piston retracts. That's fairly straightforward. At the same time as this is happening, that torch is obviously turned off, which retracts this piston, like that. But as you can see, it's leaving this one because this one's still powered for the time being. <laughs> and also, this dust is turned off, so these two tick, these, sorry, these two ticks, these two repeat oh, crumbs, these two pistons then retract. And again, this leaves these, this one up just for the time being. Then after two ticks, that repeater turns off, unpowering this one. At the same time as this is happening, obviously when this torch turns off, this dust turns off. And after three ticks, this repeater turns off, unpowering this block, which unpowers this one. So now we need to retract these ones again. We need to retract that piston again, and then we need to retract this one again. So how do we do that? Well, this one is easy. This observer here detects when this piston moves up and down. When it moves down, it can pulse into this dust because this dust would be off, which will extend these pistons again, like so. Remo moving that piston back to here. So that's fairly straightforward. But for the piston extender, it gets a little bit more tricky again. So first of all, we need to extend this piston again. So that's why we have this observer here. So as that torch turns back off, this observer detects it, powering this block, which obviously is next to the piston. So the piston briefly pulses like that. And now we just have to power this piston. Now, as that piston pulses, this observer detects that, which then this observer detects that uh, an observer pulsing, pulsing into this block, 
which this duster would be off, but now it then turns on for a very brief second, allowing this repeater to turn on for a very brief second. And after three ticks, it pulses this block very briefly, which obviously extends that piston. And that's why the timing on this circuit is extremely vital. Because if you pulse this circuit before this one has time to retract, this is not going to work. Because as this one tries to retract, this one will be extending and we get that. So this is actually gave me a little bit of a nightmare <laughs> just to get that timing exactly right. But that's basically how it works. So it's not too complicated, but it is quite a lot going on in a small area. Okay, on to build two. And for a hidden player launcher, you're going to need one relic piston, three stick piston, four observers, three resistance repeaters, three resistance torches, one resistance dust, one hopper, one obsidian, one slime block, one wooden button, five blocks red and dagon, and ten blocks for your decoration. So for our second build, we're firstly going to start in the same way as our first. We're going to be digging out some blocks. So grab your shovels. <laughs> so what I've done here is I've laid out a five by two area. So this is basically what is going to be covering the redstone. And we want to be standing here. So just Again with the cave noises. I'm recording. <laughs> Please have some manners. <laughs> so this block here is indicating where we're going to be standing when we're going to get launched up. So just make sure you orientate this right into your base. Have you done that? <laughs> so a five by two area. And what we're going to do is we're going to break out one, two, three, four, five, and then three up. One, two, three, like that. And we can dig out this hole, but I'm going to leave that block there just to remind me where I'm going to be launched up, okay? So now we should have a five by three hole. Good. But this needs to be six deep, so you need to dig this out five more times. Okay, so now you've done that, just double check that it is six deep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okay, so this, like I said, this is where we're going to be launched up. So underneath here, we want to come down one, two, three, four blocks. Remove the first three and place a sticky piston facing upward. Then a slime block on top. And remove this block. And next to the sticky piston facing upward, we need a regular piston, like so. Place a, a temporary block next to this piston and one up. And another sticky piston here. You got that? Good. <laughs> then we want to place a temporary block here. And one to the right. Remove this one and have a torch here, which should extend this piston. Good. Then grab a piece of obsidian, which I have forgotten to get out, which is brilliant. <laughs> so like I said, grab a piece of obsidian <laughs> and place it next to our slime block here. And on that obsidian, coming away from this block, have a repeater on two tick delay. Oh, by the way, it doesn't need to be an obsidian. It just needs to be an immovable block. In front of our repeater, place a block, temporary block down, and another. Remove the middle, place dust on that block, and a torch on the side of this block, which would extend this piston here. Perfect. Oh, and on this block, we can place a button. And just make sure it's a wooden button and not a stone button. Okay, now you've got that little circuit. What you need to do is come underneath here, and you need to firstly place an observer off the side of this piston going toward this block like that. The dot should be here and the face going outwards, okay? And in this little hole here, place your block. Then we need to grab a resto repeater and place it on two ticks on that observer coming away from that obsidian. Now you might find this a little bit tricky, but if you come here and place it like this, you should be fine. There we are. So that's on one tick, but we want, we want it on two ticks. So press it one more time like that. Then a block in front of that repeater and then a hopper underneath this block like that. I know that's strange, but just do it. <laughs> Then we need to place a temporary block next to this piston and a sticky piston facing downward, which should extend because it's getting powered by that torch. Then grab another observer and place it like this. So the dot going toward this nice space here. On the front of our observer, have another observer, but going downward. So the dot going to, down toward the floor and the face going up toward the sky. Then grab another observer and place it coming away from this observer like that. Now, face this way and place a repeater. Now, I'm not actually, I can't remember what, what repeater timing this has to be on. One second. So place your repeater down and press it t two more times. Once, twice, like that. And then the last thing on this block here, place another torch 
underneath this sticky piston. And that's it. <laughs> that's it completely done. So when we press this button, it should do this. Perfect. <laughs> so that is it completely done. What I'll just do is cover up all the redstone. Like so. Stand here. Press the button. Beautiful. Now, if you want to place the button above the ground, like on here, for example, you just be careful because if you place dust here, it's going to create a redstone torch clock because there's a... Um, Wait, it's that side, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's a torch there. So what you need to do is just place a slab instead of a full block. Like this. And it won't uh, be an issue. So then you can place a block here and have your button. Oh, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> Where's my button gone? Oh, there you are. Now you can have your button here. Stand there, press the button, and you get launched up. Brilliant. <laughs> so like the first build, how does this build actually work? Thankfully, this build is super simple to understand. Basically, the principle is this. You stand on here. First of all, this piston retracts, moving that block down underneath the ground. Then this piston takes it away. Then this piston pulses, which launches you up. Then this piston extends and retracts to move that block back up. Then this piston moves that block back over. And this one extends back to recreate the floor. But you'll notice something quite strange. This piston needs to retract first. So it retracts first but then needs to extend last because this one needs to extend first and then this one needs to extend. That's why we have this little bit of a weird circuit going on with the torches and the rest of the repeaters. So when I press this button in, it's basically like flicking a lever on. First of all, this torch unpowers, but that doesn't do anything because there is another torch keeping that piston extended. So that doesn't do anything, but we'll, keep, we'll go back to that later. Two ticks later, this uh, repeater turns on powering this block, which obviously powers this dust, unpowering this torch, allowing this uh, sticky piston to retract. Like that. But you'll see this dust is actually omnidirectional, so it's powering this block here. When this block gets powered, this resident repeater can take the power from that block, so after two tick delay, it puts power into this block. Now, when this block gets powered, it forces this torch to unpower. So after the, is it four ticks? then this one retracts. That's how this one can retract second, even though there's a torch directly next to it. <laughs> now, at the same time this is happening, as this block gets powered, this hopper gets powered. When this observer detects that hopper being powered, it pulses, which pulses into this block, which obviously extends and retracts this piston very briefly, which is the thing which launches us up. But you'll notice at the same time as it launches us up, it grabs the flooring block and places it down here. So we need that flooring block to go back up to here. Now, do you remember this torch earlier? We said we don't have to worry about it. Well, we have to worry about it now. As it turns off at the beginning, it doesn't affect this piston, of course, but this piston is getting power from it as well. So as that torch turns off, this piston retracts, moving this observer up to here. As that observer moves up to here, it pulses because it realizes it's moved, which pulses this repeater. After three ticks, this repeater pulses. This observer detects that repeater pulsing, which then this observer detects that repeat, uh, observer pulsing, which fires into this piston, just in time to pulse this piston and move the block up. Like that. Good. <laughs> so that's what happens on the rising edge. Like that. So that's when it happens when you press the button in. But on the falling edge, we can see everything gets placed back because as that button then comes back out, as it turns back off, it obviously unpowers this block, allowing this torch to turn back on. When that torch turns on, it's obviously going to extend this piston. And at the same time as that, when this block gets unpowered, this repeater unpowers, unpowering this block, unpowering this dust, unpowering this block, which allows this torch to turn back on, which then extends that piston going back to normal. And that's it. To be honest, I think this build is easier to watch. So just, um, just watch in slow-mo. Ugh, not another list. <laughs> I can't do it. And finally, we're on the last build. <laughs> if I sound like I'm flagging, it's because I am. <laughs> okay, so as you can see here, we have... Again with the cave sounds, that's three times in a row. Oh, what have I done to deserve this? 
<laughs> so again, like the other two builds, we have to start by doing some digging. So this is a three by three square here. So this is where our build is going to go. And this is where we're going to stand. So our button will go here. We'll press the button and we'll go down here. Just a word of warning. If we, as we're building it now, we're going to press the button here on this side. We're going to fall down and then we're going to go out that way. So our exit will be over there, not this side, but over this side. Does that make sense? <laughs> Just make sure you got it absolutely right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this block where we're going to be standing and I'm going to remove one, two, three, four blocks like that and floor blocks, floor? Well, four floor blocks to the right, one, two, three, four, and just make a square like so. But this hole needs to be eight deep. So you need to dig this out seven more times. Okay, so you should have a four, one, two, three, four, by four, by eight deep hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. So what we're going to do first is we're going to place one, two, three blocks down underneath our standing block, the block we're going to stand on, <laughs> remove the first two and have a sticky piston facing upward. Like that. Come to the side with more space and come out one, two and place two sticky pistons like that. Remove those three and then place a third sticky piston underneath like so. Then place a decoration block on the back of this block and come down one, two, three. And then I like to place another decoration block, but which is a bit different from the others because this is where our button's going to go just to, it's just a good thing to remind yourself <laughs> place a torch on the back side of that block block up and dust so that dust should be in line with that block which should extend that piston then place a block here and have a repeater on three tick delay coming away from that block so place it down and press it twice once twice place a block here that should extend that piston and dust on top Good. Then place another decoration block here. So this block is where our button's going to go on the surface. Place a sticky piston directly underneath that block. A block of redstone on its face. A temporary block next to the block where the button's going to go. Block underneath. Ah, actually, no. Wait a second. This block needs to be a slab. I just remembered. <laughs> Sorry. So place a block there. That's fine. But then place a slab or a piece of glass here. Remove this block and some dust. That's it. <laughs> That's much better. So now what you'll find, if you place a button here and press it, we should have a trap door working. And if we place a button down here and press it, we should also have the trap door working. Brilliant. Because both sides are turning off that torch there. Fantastic. So all we have to do now is work on this piston and also the launcher. So after you place our buttons, come down to the bottom and underneath this block with the button on it, come down one, two, three blocks. On the third block, facing upward, have a sticky piston, and then a slime block. And now we need to remove these three blocks here. Good. Next to the slime block, place a piece of obsidian and have dust on it. Tempe block next to it and then one underneath. Remove the first one and dust. And a torch here, which should extend that piston. Now it's up to you on this bit. Either you have another piece of obsidian here, as you walk in you have to go over obsidian, or you can place a decoration block and just have it that the decoration block will go up and down. Or <laughs> what I like to do is have a decoration block, grab a piston and place it next to the sticky piston like this, place three blocks like this, have dust here and here, and have a repeater on two tick delay. So what that will do is it will retract this line block, but it will extend this block up as you can see. So it just makes the floor look nice and pretty. <laughs> it's completely up to you. If you remove the piston, all it does is that. So it's completely up to you, that bit. Now to finish off the redstone, all we have to do is come to this block here and place a sticky piston facing downward. That sticky piston should extend. Brilliant. Place an observer here. Place a block next to the dot and then have a repeater on one tick going toward that piston. So just place it down and don't press it any more times. And thankfully, that is all the rest of home we have to do today. <laughs> Woo! That was quite long. So now we just need to place in some blocks going up the side. One, two, three, four, five. And some blocks on this side. One, two. Some more wood. Um, I like just to frame this door. Like so. But 
but it's completely up to you. Okay, so that's our exit, and then we can break through like that, okay? And then finally, you can just fill in the top like so. So just to test it, we stand here, press the button, we should drop down, get caught, and then we can go off and do whatever we want. And then when we're done, press the button, and it should launch us up. Perfect. And just to show you, it works in survival. Brilliant. Don't take any damage. Don't take anything. <laughs> and then press the button again. And there we are. It doesn't even suffocate us for a second, which is great. <laughs> and now to explain the last build, but thankfully this one is actually very, very simple. So thankfully. <laughs> so when we stand here and press the button, what happens? Well, firstly, this trap door opens and we fall down. So how does that happen? Well, when I press that button, that block obviously powers, which obviously extends this piston, moving this redstone block down to here, which powers this dust. As this dust powers, this block gets powered. As that block gets powered, it unpowers this torch. As that torch unpowers, it unpowers this block, unpowering this dust, which unpowers this block. Now there is a piston there, which obviously retracts as that block um, unpowers, like this, moving our flooring down one. Does that make sense? <laughs> then after three tick delay, this repeater turns off, unpowering this block and unpowering this dust, which retracts these two pistons like so. Now we're in free fall. But do you remember from earlier, we have that block which catches you. Now to do that, what I've done, as this block and this dust turns off, this piston obviously retracts, moving this observer up to here. As that observer moves up to there, it obviously pulses because it's been moved. And then after one tick, this repeater gives a pulse into this sticky piston, which extends that block just in time to catch you. As you're falling, wee, <laughs> this one catches you like that and then quickly retracts, allowing you to fall the rest. So that's why it doesn't suffocate you for one. And two, it doesn't allow you to bounce back up. It's, uh, to be honest, I think it's quite a smart system. <laughs> now for our button down the bottom, of course we need to open the trapdoor again, but also we need to launch ourselves. So when I press the button, it's going to unpower this torch because that button actually is on that block and it's going to open our trapdoor. Now at the same time as that our trapdoor is opening, when that block gets hard powered, this dust here gets activated, which obviously activates this dust, which powers this block, which unpowers this torch here, which retracts this sticky piston like this. So we're standing on that slime block and it moves us down. At the same time as this, this dust powers. And after two ticks, this dust powers, powering this block, which obviously extends this piston, moving our flooring block back into its proper place, <laughs> just to make it nice and neat. <laughs> then as the, to uh, sorry, then as the button unpowers, so as it finishes its pulse, so as it does that, as it comes back out, Obviously, this dust then turns off, which allows this torch to turn back on, which launches, a, which launches us up into the sky. <laughs> and it does so just in time, because remember, this torch is then now then turning back on, which obviously is closing our system. So we launch just in time as this closes like this and extends. But not with a button, obviously. Now you see how close the timing is, if I show you the villager. So as I press the button up here, you can see it catches him and then he falls and he doesn't suffocate. But when you press that button down here, if I can press it. Nope. Will you allow me? Could you get your butt out the way? <laughs> can I press it? No, hold on. I, play, I placed another button down around here just in case. Oh, it's going to be hard. I have to get right to the top quickly. You see you get launched and then it closes and it's super, super close. That's why we've got to be really close with our repeated timings. What happens if you have loads of villagers? Okay, I made some modifications to the design. So when I press that button up there, they all get shot up. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. You ready? And I was like, they're not doing anything. Oh, what a shit. Oh, then, and then they realized they were so tight. One moved and it was bang. <laughs> that 
was quite a marathon. <laughs> that was quite a lot of information. And doing three tutorials, actually, it's surprisingly hard. But sadly, this is in the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video or like this design, <laughs> please give us a like. And if you loved it, make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button for more awesome content. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And I will see you later. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.